everybody. Hello. Um, I'm going to give a couple seconds here to start up before I give the introduction because last time I streamed, it didn't it cut off the first few seconds. Um, it is Sunday afternoon. There we go. All right, it's streaming. Sunday afternoon, and I'm going to show how to import the models for these Vive controllers and get up, get uh, motion control set up and going so that you can have the head display on and your hand motions will be lined up with what you are doing. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what I what you'll need today is Unreal Engine. I'm using 4.11.2, so I'm downloaded 4.12. Um, you're going to need at least, I think, at least 4.11, probably optimally 4.12, because I know they have some support upgrades for Vive and different motion controllers there. But get that downloaded and do that. You'll need Blender or some other. Actually, no. Uh, I actually figured out how to avoid using Blender. So you won't need anything except for Unreal Engine. And you'll need to have Steam VR downloaded, obviously. Um, hopefully, everybody has that if they have a Vive. And you will need uh, Vive and motion controllers to actually use once you do this. It's um, You can do this without. If you just download Steam VR, uh, but testing it would be impossible. So there, I mean, honestly, there wouldn't be any use to program something for the Vive unless you can actually like test how it works. So uh, what I've done is I actually have a level here uh, set up just to test perspective and sizing on things. So you can go ahead and see. I'll, I'll hold up the head display. You can go ahead and see that it is working here. I don't know if you can see. Um, yeah, so as I wave this, you can see on the screen it's waving that, and it is lined up. Uh, there's no way for you to see that unless you're actually in the headset, but I got it lined up so that it feels like it's sitting in my invisible hand. Uh, so I'm going to walk through how to do that. Um, uh, just as props, I've got a milk can from the Medieval Props Pack. I've got a some sort of mm, cube... Uh, tied down canvas around an unknown material. And I have a photo scan stuffed animal that I photo scanned about a month ago just to test out the photogrammetry. Turned out fairly well. Um, all right, so I'll go ahead and show you guys exactly how to do this. Um, you can see I have everything that you'll need is right here, but we're gonna go ahead and start from scratch. So we're gonna create a new folder and we're going to actually put it directly in content folder here um, and we'll rename it say tutorial controller setup something like that to use apparently all right okay so in this we're going to need a couple of things that I'll go ahead and uh, put down we'll go ahead and create a blueprint class that is going to be our pawn and that we'll call that um, tutorial VR on, and we're going to need a game mode, so let's go ahead and do another blueprint class. You can also uh, edit any other game mode that you want, um, and just make it use the HMD, but we're going to call this, uh, tutorial VR game mode. So we got those two set up. I'm going to go ahead and save because this will invariably crash. And if you are halfway through this and it crashes, it kind of sucks. So the next thing we're going to do, this is all very easy, by the way. Um, it's made easy by the fact that all of the models are available in the file directory of SteamVR itself. Uh, and that includes a flat white material. So if you want special materials like in the lab or in the tutorial that actually reflect the color, you will have to find those elsewhere. Uh, unless I'm just missing them. But the next step is to import the actual model. So let's go ahead and import, and I'll go ahead and back all the way out. So I've got my programs all in this hard drive file here. You're going to go into Steam. So whichever directory you have Steam installed on, go to that directory, select Steam. Once you're in Steam here, scroll all the way down, find one called Steam Apps, uh, not Steam, at least in this version, that may change later. I know at one point it was in Steam. Go to Steam Apps and open that. Go to Common, and this will show you all of your installed Steam Apps. Scroll down 
to Steam VR. Open it. Go to Resources. Open that. And then they'll have something called Render Models. And this is the directory you want. So if you go to Render Models here, you can scroll down. And at the very bottom, we have one called VR Vive Controller 1 Vive. Now, don't, there's also one called Generic Controller. That is actually just like a little like Xboxy looking controller. They've got some hands that kind of look weird. And they've got a whole bunch of other stuff. The one that we're, I'm going to use is the VR Controller Vive 1 Vive. But feel free to look through all these and uh, use whatever you want. I think this is all available to use in Vive applications. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll notice that there's actually quite a lot of object files in here. And this is actually each of the individual pieces of the Vive controller. Uh, so that if you want to, as in the tutorial or in the lab, if you want to actually animate in VR, all of the motions that go along with pressing the buttons and so on and so forth, you can do that. You can import all of these individually and then hook all that up. I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to get a very basic motion tracking going on these controllers. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the object file and hit open. And this will bring up our import options for FX, B, FBX imports on Unreal. Uh, it is a dot object, but Unreal has some um, way of translating that into an FBX, so you shouldn't have any problem. The only thing you need to change here is to set the uniform scale to 100 because the units are just off. And it's always been like that, but if you forget it, it'll be teeny tiny. So we're going to hit import all. And that'll load for a minute. And then we have them both. And you'll notice it's upside down. You can either go in and actually transform it, or you can just do that whenever you're editing the pond, which is what I'm going to do. Again, save everything before you do any of this. So what? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up the pawn, and then I'm going to set up the game mode with this pawn, and then I'm going to change the world settings so that it uses this game mode, and we'll be all set. That's really as easy as that. So in the pawn, we need to do a few things. First of all, we need a camera. So we're going to add component, and we're going to start typing camera. And once that's selected, we're going to use that, and we can just leave it named to that. We'll go ahead and compile and save. And we're going to add something called a motion controller. This is something that was added for motion controls specifically, and that is what we're going to use. It works wonderfully. So we're going to call this one motion controller left, because we have a left hand, and we're going to add another one, motion controller, and we're going to call it motion controller right. And this is what's going to actually control the motion and track with uh, the headset and so on and so forth. Um, and that's all good and well, but you still can't see anything. So under each of these, we're going to uh, do a static mesh. Actually, yeah, it drops it down. It's not actually a child. So we'll call this one left. And we'll do that again. And we'll call this one right. And we're going to click and drag them up until it's overlapping and then release so that they are the children of each of these two. And we're going to compile and save. And then we're going to change what these static mes meshes actually are. So let's go into left and right. So if you click left and then hold control and click right, so you've selected both. And we're going to go in here and we're going to start typing BR. I've got this twice. Uh, one of them is from a previous test that I did. Um, but I guess it doesn't really. Tutorial controller setup. That's the one in the path that we're using. So I'll go ahead and use that one. Um, so you just go in and you select that. It'll automatically bring in the material, which again is just flat white. And we're going to go ahead and compile and save. And while we have them both selected, we're going to go ahead and do a rotation. So click in anywhere in the viewport. It should leave them selected. But we want to click in the viewport and then press E, or conversely, click on this, and we'll rotate it 90 this way, and then 90 this way. It doesn't really matter which ways you rotate it, so long as at the end you end up with it facing the same direction as the camera. So we're going to go ahead and compile and save, and then we're going to do one more thing with both of the motion controllers, and that is to lift them up about 20 centimeters. And I don't know why uh, it doesn't pick it up as perfectly centered if it's in the middle here, but for some reason it seems off. And maybe that's just me being crazy, but I always have been lifting it up 20 centimeters to get it to feel like it's lined up. Um, I know also it, like there's some suggestions to lower the camera and stuff, so maybe that's part of it is that the camera view's off. Um, we need to add one more component, which is a floating pawn movement 
and that's going to allow later on, it's going to allow for, uh, that's going to allow you to move within your world space um, correctly. And we are going to compile and save, and then we need one thing, um, only one node in the event graph. And then I'll go through everything that we just did to make sure that everybody has it straight. Uh, under event begin play, we want to make sure that the view is not uh, on the monitor here, but on the actual HMD um, head mounted display. So what we're going to do is type in enable HMD, and it'll bring up one node, and that's the one we want. And we want to make sure that you check yes, because if you leave it false, then you're basically saying don't use the head mounted display. And we want to set that there, and we compile and save. And so to go through this one more time, we have a camera that we added that's a direct child of the scene root here. We have three other children directly under the scene root. One is a floating pawn movement, and that's going to let you move around in the world space. Uh, the head mounted display is going to handle that through that. We have two motion controllers. Each of these has a child, which is the static mesh. And oh, one thing I forgot to do, in these motion controllers, it has left and right, and you're going to want to set that. Um, it might work without, but you want to go in and set under hand right for the right one and left for the left one. Left is the default, so it shouldn't have any problem. So I'll save again. So now that we have this structure with the scene root, the camera, each of the motion controllers, and the pawn as direct children, and then each motion controller having a static mesh as its child, go over to the event graph and we say enable HMD and that really is it. Now we need to set up the game mode which is as easy as that if not easier. All you do is open it and if the default window opens up in here then you can do all this in the defaults but if it opens up to a viewport like this for some reason all the defaults will be over here. And all you need to do is change the default pawn class to our tutorial they call it tutorial character, what is it? Tutorial VR pawn, that's what we want to set it to. This is the default menu that I was talking about. So, uh, tutorial VR pawn, we want to set it to that. And we're going to go ahead and compile and save and exit. And I am going to go ahead and select then tutorial VR game mode. And I'm going to save everything so that if when I click play, it crashes. Uh, I've saved everything. So save, file, save all. So attentive like that. Or try and be. Or I'm not an angry. And that should be everything we need. I may have forgotten something. I have to do a little bit of investigating. But we're going to go ahead and hit play. And it immediately pops up the head mounted display, which you can see is tracking. And it, as I move it around, it is looking around. And if I pick up the controller, it's in front of us, and it tracks, and it's in front. And what I will do now is get up, and I'll walk around. You can go over this way. I know you can't see me in the screen, but I'm walking around the room. And we can go back over this way, over here, come back, and yep, have a hand at any point in it. It tracks pretty darn well. So that is... Ooh. Sorry for the disorientation there. That is uh, effectively everything you need to get all of this set up and working. Um, I can do a different live stream at some point. I wanted to do a really quick short one. Um, I can do a different one for um, setting up inputs. The inputs aren't too complicated, but I need to get a little bit more familiar before I feel comfortable streaming it all for you guys. Um, but if you're interested in get it, seeing how to get uh, inputs set up and so on and so forth, so you can actually click buttons and have it do things, either you know shoot something or maybe even if I can figure out how to use a physics handle with one of them, uh, pick up an object directly, then let me know and I will put that video together as soon as I can. Um, that's it for now. I wanted this to be a quick video, so I hope uh, that was helpful and that everybody enjoyed that. If there's any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will catch you guys next time.